Good morning, Pastor. How are you doing? Good. Yes, good. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, no other name whereabout we can be saved. In the name of Jesus, we come humbly before you this morning, God, and we ask, oh God, that you would cleanse us of any unrighteousness and anything that be not like you that's found in us take it out oh god father god we come to bless you we come to praise you our heart is filled with praise this morning we got up to worship you and we got up to give you glory and we came to give you honor not for what you've done god but for who you are we bless you this morning for your place in the kingdom we thank you this morning that you are God. We thank you, oh God, that it is you that have loved us. It's you that have made us and not we ourselves. Oh God, continue to let us be the sheep of your pasture this morning. Continue to lead us, oh God. Oh, lead us on your path of righteousness this morning, oh God. And God, when you're doing it this morning, oh God, create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit down within us, oh God. We come to worship you. We come to praise you. We come to extol thy name, oh God. We come giving you glory from the depths of our soul with the fruit of our lip. We come to magnify you, oh God, the God of our salvation the God of this universe, he who created heaven and earth, he who holds the world in the palm of his hand. Oh, God, mighty are your works this morning. Mighty are your works this morning. Mighty are your works this morning. Your name is wonderful. Your name is worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, we render the highest praise to you. We give you our hallelujah this morning. We shabak you this morning. Told on to you, oh God. Hallelujah to your holy and righteous name. Father God, we commit this service into your hand that you would have your way, oh God, that you would move as you see fit, God, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free, oh God. And when you've done it, we shall be careful to give you the praise. 
We shall be careful to give you the glory. And we shall be careful to give you the honor. We lift your manservant up today, oh God. Use him for your glory, oh God. You said that if he opened his mouth that you would speak for him, oh God. Do it for your glory. Let us hear a word from you this morning. Oh, we thank you and we praise you and we bless you. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Another chance you 
Thank you. 
There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Praise amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're moving forward. Praise We're moving God. forward. We're amen. Moving forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Remain standing. Remain standing. We're going to read today's scripture. It's short, so we're going to read it together. Mark 8, 22 to 26. We're all going to read it together. If you're able to stand in the house of the Lord, please do so at this time. We're going to read together. And it reads, they came to Bethesda, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Praise God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a brief moment. God is awesome, saints, is he not? He definitely is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is an awesome God, and we love him today. We love him today. Uh, before I go into the announcements, I just want to welcome a member here today. And Tiffany Chandler, is it Tiffany? Praise the Lord. On behalf of our pastors, uh, Pastor Myrie and Pastor Parks, we here at House of Praise Epi Center want to welcome you to the church where Christ and you are first. Can we give Tiffany a warm welcome? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. We pray that our service is a blessing to you. And thank you, Brother Tyron, for inviting her. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is awesome. He is good. He's magnificent. He's mighty. He's He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. Um, we have Pastor Foga from the Sunshine State in the Garden State with us here today. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you. It's been a while. It's been a while. I don't think it's been 2022, right? It was last year. It was last year. You were here this year? I don't think so. So happy new year. I don't remember. No, I remember. No, it was not last. It was not this year. It was last year. It was last year. Praise the Lord. Well, God brought you through another year. He brought us all through as well, as you can see. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to have you, of course, as usual your home. So I don't need to say welcome. I just need to say hello again. Hello again. Hello again. It's good to have all of you in God's house. We have some birthdays coming up on Wednesday. Um, is Sister Eileen on? She's not on. When in her absence, we wish her a happy birthday. And she happens to share it with my youngest child, the last of the Mohicans, like my dad used to say, Lorenzo. Celebrating a birthday on Wednesday. I was talking to my wonderful husband last week. I'm like, you think June got us beat? You think, you think June, you think the June birth, you think you, you think they got us beat? Big old cool day smile over here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we whatever. We we gonna keep on counting. We're 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 the barge people. Where the barge people at? <laughs> you sure what, what? we we missed. We tied? All right, well, we, we gonna, that's up for discussion after church. You know, if Sister Nadine would have had her list, she would have been able to tell you. But we don't have one. Sister Nadine, I'm going to need all the July birthdays next month, please. Thank you. I'm going to need all the July birthdays. You know what we're going to do so I don't forget anything? I'm going to have all the July birthdays displayed. Is that all right? Well, if it ain't all right, I'm going to do it anyway, so it's okay. Anybody have a, else have a birthday from June 26th to July 2nd in the, in the house? Anybody online? I, I don't have it online, so I, I'm not going to know. 
No June 26th to July 2nd. No birthdays, June 26th to July 2nd. All right. Well, June, y'all month is over, almost over. Well, praise the Lord. Praise him anyhow, almost over. But we'll continue to celebrate. We'll continue to celebrate as, the, as June continues to progress to come to an end. Praise the Lord. God is awesome. We thank him for his, his mighty acts, his goodness, his tender mercies towards us. We thank him for bringing each and every one of us here into his house. And I usually, like I always say to Pastor Diaz, we're charged the head, not the heart. On behalf of our pastor, just I said that in Prophet Park's absence, Pastor B is here. We, we, we love Pastor B and Pastor D, Elder Myrie and Elder Parks. It's wonderful to have not just one shepherd, but two. Praise the Lord. Some people can say that's double blessings. Other people can say it's double trouble. We don't know. It's up to you. You decide. I'll leave that up to everyone's discretion. You decide. You decide. I believe it's double blessing too. I believe so. I believe so. Well, God is awesome. Am I forgetting anyone or anything? Well, we're going to have Brother Mark come to the podium. All right. This is an opportunity for all of us to participate in worship, in worship and giving. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't it a wonderful day? Yes. Yes, it is. And I keep saying wisely. According to Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10, we believe in God's teaching and prayer. And as we participate in God's calling, we may believe in God's God for us. Jobs, jobs and businesses, raises and, and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, yes, ministry or bills, royalties received, money paid back, loans paid off, I shall lend and not borrow, I shall trust and be in good health. I shall give and heal. In offering time, I will praise the Lord, and I will bless the Lord, and I will give cheerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as we come to you this morning in Jesus' name, we receive your gift of life. Empty us, dear Lord his word, to receive your blessing. We give not only to receive, but to receive the blessing that you promise us. Dear Lord, we thank you for taking care of us so we can be here today to receive your blessing. We give you thanks in advance.
Praise the Lord. 
God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good because he is great. He's a great God. We worship him today. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you're a great God. You're a good God. You're an awesome God. We praise you today, Jesus. We glorify your name.
an awesome God. Oh, that it's just worship you, people. God and the Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. God is great. Heavenly Father, before your presence, we come at this time just give you thanks Hallelujah. and praise and glory and honor that is due to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus, Lord. we are about to receive the word. We pray that you bless your manservant yes. from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, open up his eyes that he can see. Give him vision. Give him a fresh word. Give him a fresh anointing, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give him new hope. May we hear from you today, God. Oh, God, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. for what we're about to hear. May we apply it to our hearts yes. and our lives in Jesus' name. Congregation, Elder Myrie, Elder Myrie Congregation. said the heaven declare his glory and the firmament show it his hand of work my God my God when you're in an atmosphere where Jesus is we can expect the unexpected oh you all didn't hear me we can expect the unexpected whatever we need from God he will provide it he will provide it today because he is a great, 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 great God. My God, my God, my God. Woo! Ah. Yes, Jesus, yes, Lord. Have your way in this place. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God. My God. I'm just trying to compose myself. I'm just trying to compose myself. My God, I want to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus, our God and our King. Um, I'm going to let you be seated, but I want to read from Mark chapter 8, verse 25. I want to speak to you today on the subject, the second touch, the second touch, the second touch. I read once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. You may be seated. You may be seated. It is an honor and a privilege to have you all in the house. It's good to have Stephanie in the house. Come on, come on, come on. I want to greet all of you, Elder. Sparks, Lady T is online, and Lady Myrie, and those of you who are online, I want to greet you all my, in the mighty name of Jesus, and those of you who are that in the house, I want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I am thankful to God that I got my spiritual daddy in the house today. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I am not I was going to wait for the end, but I want you to come, Elder and uh, Bishop, and I want you to come greet us. I want you to greet us. Yes, yes. Yes, come on, come on. Come out up and greet. Let them see who it is that imparted in me. Yes, well, yes, greetings yes. In the name of Jesus. I'm so glad to be here. Good 
Jersey, um, where your governor is not as crazy as the one I have in Florida. <laughs> and that's my opinion. <laughs> so it's good to be in the house. I thank God that um, I'm still alive. I'm in my right mind. And I can hear Brother Keith. Yes. <laughs> right. As we journey through this life, with all of its struggles and pains and trials and heartaches and all kind of stuff, God is still faithful. Yes. Hebrews 10, 23, I think, tells us that we must hold fast to the profession of our faith, yes. right? Without wavering. And in the last clause of that verse says, for God is faithful. Yes, he's a faithful God. Yes. That promise. Yes. And so that's why we need to hold on. Right? These are some real difficult times that we're going through. Is that right? I think that we can actually say um, perilous times are here. Here, yes. Yeah. The Apostle Paul. Yeah. Right? But you know, God is still faithful. Still God. His promise. May the Lord bless you. God is good. Yes. God is good. It's good to see all of you. Yes. Right? Good to see all of the grandchildren in the middle. Right? That one day in the middle, I don't think I should talk to him, you know. He doesn't answer my calls and things like that. Right? That's all right. I still love him. <laughs> but it's good to be here. I'm so glad I came for this. Well, when the first person I'm here, I came to the graduation of my eldest grandson from high school. Such a privilege to live yes. and to be able to have the blessing of being able to attend um, the graduation of my eldest grandson. And thank God he's moving along and he tells me he's going on to Rutgers University in the fall. So God must yes. be good. Thank God. Yes. Thank God. May yes. the Lord yes. bless you and keep you. Space shine up, and I do hope to be with you a little few weeks, you know, before I take my flight back to uh, Florida. God bless you. We're having a good time over there, though, right? The church is moving along over there, and where I go to church, my pastor is a tremendous teacher and preacher, and we must learn every day. It's good to be here, Pastor, with my son. Yes, yes. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We love the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Our text come to you to us today from Mark chapter 8, 22 to 26. In preparation of a sermon, there's three ways, there are three things that they said we are supposed to look when we're preparing a text. The first thing we got to do the observation. We got to go over it to see it. And then we have to do what is called interpretation. And after you do the interpretation, then application. How does it apply to us in today's day and, earth, and, and, day and time? And so in observing and the text today, I decided I want to talk to us as a church about the second touch. The second touch. Have you ever called someone on the phone or you were talking to someone on the phone and all of a sudden they got themselves another call and they say, hold on a minute. And they put you on hold. And you're waiting on hold, and it seems like they have forgotten about you. How does that make you feel? What happened when we have prayed and we have fasted? And the things we have prayed about and fasted about, nothing seems to happen. Sometimes in our life, we feel like God has forgotten us. Oh, I, 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 I ain't going to talk to that side of the church. I'm going to talk to this side. Sometimes we feel 
like God has forgotten us. Everybody's testifying, oh, God is so good to me. I prayed and God showed up. And you've been praying for weeks, for months, for years. And it seems like God has forgotten you. A couple of weeks ago, we spoke about trying to find what is the will of God. We spoke about that on our prayer. And if you get a chance, join us on Monday at 8 o'clock and at 10 o'clock. We spoke about the will of God. And that it is his will to heal us. It is his will to prosper us. Because that's what the Bible says. But what happened when you pray? And you're not healed, or so you believe. We have been told that all we need to do is to name it and claim it. We are told that speak those things that are not as if they are, and it will come to pass. What happened when you have done that? And nothing seems to work. You see, I want you to know there is a process that we all got to go through. There is a process for all of us to go through. The truth of the matter is that if every time you pray to God, he showed up and healed you, you wouldn't have to exercise no faith. Because we have to understand, if we get everything we want and we don't have faith, then we can't please God. The Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. And hear what it says faith is. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The proof of the stuff that I can't see. So when I pray and I can't see God, and I feel like he has forgotten me. I got to hold on to his faith. I got to trust that God is still God. Even if he don't heal me. I got to trust that it's God. Even when he don't deliver me from the thing that I thought he would have delivered me from. That's how I build my faith. That's how I exercise my faith. And so when he show up, I can say, thank God he showed up. I held on to God and he showed up. So I'm coming to you from the book of Mark. And he said 36 times, Mark used the word immediately and suddenly. Meaning when he records Jesus' miracle, he said they happened immediately and suddenly and so as a church as a believer we want things to happen immediately and we want it to happen suddenly the bible said in matthew chapter 8 13 when he healed the centurion servant the effect was instant his healing of peter's mother-in-law the bible said in mark chapter 1 and verse 30 to 31, he said, so he came and he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her. When Jesus healed the man, the paralytic man that was put down through the roof of the house, he said to, to him, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go. And immediately it happened. A matter of fact, when Jesus was walking, the woman came up from behind him and just touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said, immediately, she was healed. So the problem is this, as a believer, what do I do when I've called on God, when I've fasted and prayed, and it does not happen immediately? Bring us to the 
conclusion at times that maybe I have something that I need to get rid of, and that could be the case. Or maybe somehow or the other, God don't love me like he loves others. But I came this morning to tell you that in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 22, spoke about a man that it did not happen for him immediately. And the truth of the matter is all the other miracles in the Bible, it's hard for us to relate to it. But I can tell you, we can relate to this man because many of the stuff that we need from God did not happen immediately. The Bible doesn't tell us why some things happen immediately and some takes time. In our text this morning, we find some help for those of us who have prayed and cried and prayed and cried, fasted and prayed and cried when nobody sees you. And when we prayed and cried, we don't hear the voice of God. It's for those of us who have lost our focus. It's for those of us who are struggling to keep on trusting God. Because it just seems like things is not working out as we thought it would. It's for those of us who cannot do it on our own, who need somebody to carry us, need somebody to pray us through. For those of us who need a change in our situation, in whatever era of our life that we need it, I'm happy this morning that you're here, whether in the house or online, I am just happy because I got a word for you. I would be preaching using what is known as a narrative exposi expository type of preaching. In essence, I usually do what is a topical or isogelical preaching where I isolate the topic and I build from there. This time I'm going to narrate. I know I may have messed that word out. Narrate. Uh, I, uh, I, we, 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 uh, um, the, this particular story for you to understand. So we're going to read each verse until we reach the end. So now you could time me and know when I'm going to finish. <laughs> it's only five verses. So you will know when I get to the end. The first point I like to, to put up on there is the process. It said in verse 22, then came to Bethsaida. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. I want you to know that everything in life takes time. Everything is a process. We must go through a process. If you want to buy a house, there is a process. If you want to buy a car, there is a process. If you want to attend college, there is a process. If you want a job, there is a process. A matter of fact, even if you want to get married, there is a hard, long process. Our journey in the Christian walk is a process too. We all have one thing in common, and that is we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The best thing that we can ever have in our life is a good friend, or a mother, or a father, or somebody who cares for us. The Bible reference to this type of person, he said that, they came to Bethsaida, some people. We got to have a some people. Because of the fact that we are blind. We don't know what we really want. It is like our kids when they are born. They think they know what they want, but they really don't know what they want. So every now and then, you got to carry them. 
Uh, even when they don't want to show up, you got to carry them. The Bible said that this man was carried by some people. It didn't say if it was friends or co-worker. It didn't say whether it was mother or father. He said some people just carried him. I'm not sure if he wanted to see Jesus. I'm not sure if he knew about Jesus. I'm not even sure if he wanted to see. But one thing I know, somebody saw that he needed Jesus. <laughs> somebody knew who Jesus was. Somebody knew where Jesus was. And somebody carried him to Jesus. My God, there's some folks that we got to carry to Jesus. That's what evangelism is all about. You're at work and they talk all kinds of things and you say, don't worry, I know of Jesus. I know of a man. I know somebody who can change your situation because, uh, yeah, I might still have pain, but I got peace. Ah, uh, you got to understand that we're not exempt from the trials of this world. But what we have is a hope. Oh, God. Because my hope is built on nothing less. So in essence, we got to go through the process. The Bible said they brought him to Jesus. What a blessing it is to have friends or co-worker, or a mother, or a father, somebody who can carry us to Jesus when we are blind. I know. I'm just going to tell you all story. I know you all don't want us to know. You act like you have done everything and you did it by yourself. You ever see us? Oh, look at the house. I worked so hard and I got the house. Uh, but, but we ain't going to tell you that for us to get the house, we had to borrow some money to put the down payment down. Oh, we ain't going to tell you about the folks who had to carry us. Uh, I thank God for those who helped me. Yeah, we have the car. It looks good. But someone had to call sign for us to get the car. In essence, we all need somebody to help us as we travel along life's journey, because it is a process. As a matter of fact, the job that some of us are in, we don't have the degree for the job. We don't have the qualification, and we see it all the time on the job. Oh, you don't see it. I see it all the time. People who are in position that don't have the qualification, don't have the degree, but somebody, they knew somebody. I'm so glad for the speaker that I know. I know a man, his name is Jesus, and he can give me anything. So the people that brought this blind man to Jesus, and we don't know their name. We don't know who they are. The fact is, there are some folks who have done some great things, and you don't know their name. They work behind the scene. They don't want to be seen. That's what God is looking for. People who are willing to work behind the scene. They don't need no accolades. They don't need nothing. I, 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 my, my mind just run to, to the airplane. Have you ever been to the airport early? And you sat and you're watching your plane? There's something about the plane. It, 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 is, it, it travels fast, but the plane cannot reverse. Have you ever thought about it? It cannot reverse. There is a little, it, it's a little cart almost that have to push it. Thank God for those things that is unknown, that pushed us into our destiny, pushed us into a blessing, pushed us into what God has called us for. Let's look at what happened so we understand that this man's situation was not different from any other. If you're taking note, in Mark chapter 9, 27 to 30, there was two blind men that Jesus met. And the Bible said he touched their eyes and their eyes 
were opened. In Matthew chapter 12, 22, the, the, then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him in so much that his blind and dumb disappeared. In essence, just, they didn't say he touched him or spoke to him. Just, just said that because he was in the presence of God. He was healed. In John 9 and verse 6, there's a man that he was blind and he used clay to heal his eyes. And then there was blind Bartimaeus. All Jesus did was spoke to him. He didn't lay hands on him. He spoke to him. And you see, you got to understand, one man got it by that touch. One man got it by his presence. Another by the clay. Another by the word. And in our story today, he got it by a spit. The Bible said that Jesus spat on him. Let me tell you what this means. It was the same problem. They all were blind. But it was a different process. I want you to know that I know you love me, but you can't tell me what I'm going through. You might have the same situation happen to you, but my process is different from you. I might have the same problem, but it's a different process. So that's why when you see somebody doing something, all you got to do is pray for them because their process might be different. The way God did it for you might not be the way he's going to do it for me. And that's the problem with the church. We think it's a one. We think it's a cookie cutter thing. If God saved me while I was on my knees praying, he got to save you while you were on your knees. That's not true. I know as a preacher, we want to believe it's us and our a dynamic message that we preach that caused you to be saved, but it's not true. All we're doing is giving you a word to sharpen you. Because the Bible said Paul was on his way down to Damascus. He had nothing about Christ on his mind. He was going to kill Christian, and all of a sudden, he met Jesus. You could be in the bar and met Jesus right there. You could be in the hotel room with a hooker and you meet Jesus right there. It doesn't matter where you are. Jesus will meet you anywhere because it's a spirit that does destroy it. So my process and your process is different. That's why I heard one songwriter said, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. Because when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. So we understand that they all were blind. One got it by the laying of hands. The other got it just by being in his presence. The other got it by the word. This man got it by his spit. Think about it. That's a nasty process. You might get it by just him laying his hands on you. You might get it by him speaking to you or just his presence. But for those of you who are like me, we got to get it a nasty way. He got to spit on us. Because the first touch, we ain't seen clearly. Ah, you all don't hear me. I told you that when I was growing up and when I was a young Christian, and when I look at everybody getting up to testify how God has been good, I look at myself and I thought I wasn't saved. Because what they were testifying about, I wasn't living it. I wasn't getting it. And I said, maybe I ain't saved until I realize my process. I just got to go through it another way. I 
I want the first touch up there, the first touch. I ain't said the second yet. You're rushing me. You're rushing. I want the first. Oh, it's the first. Sorry. So I, 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 look at, I look at it wrong. The first touch, it gives you sight. <laughs> the first touch gives you sight. Hear what he said. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Sometimes you got to get away from your king man. Sometimes you got to get away from some friends. You're wondering why you're struggling. It's because you got to get away from that company. Before you got saved, you all like to hang out. That was, those were your girls. Those were your boys. But now you got to change your environment. You got to change the folks that are around you. When I was growing up, my parents used to tell me, show you my, show me your friend, and I'll tell you who you are. And I thought it was bogus, but when I got older, I realized it's true. Because you ain't going to hang with somebody you don't have something in common. Oh, God. Something got to be in common. The truth is, I can lead you to Christ, but when I lead you to Christ, I got to let you go. The Bible says they brought him to Christ. They wanted him to touch them. Touch this man. But Jesus took him by the hand. Come, come with me. Now I want you to understand something keen about this text and this particular um, situation. The man had to trust Jesus. He didn't know him. He didn't know where he was stationed, him elder. But he was blind and he could see and he had to trust Jesus. Can you trust God when you don't know what he's up to? Can you trust God when you can't see your way? The first touch. It said in verse 23, I read it already. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside. And then he said, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? I want to ask you this morning, what do you see? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees. Walking. <laughs> I told you, the text, it's about observation. There's some things that I observe about this text. The first observation of the text, I concluded that this man was not born blind. <laughs> he was not born blind. Because if he was born blind, he would know what a man looked like or what a tree looked like. That means there was some issue, there was some problem that caused him to go blind. In essence, some of us might be sitting here. And we are blind. Not that we were born blind, but we have gone blind. I believe the church has gone blind. And when I talk about, I'm talking about the universal church. We have gotten so political and driven that now we cannot see. We are seeing men walking as trees. Because we're, our eyes are not seeing what we're supposed to see. That's my first uh, obligate, um, observation. That he was not born blind. And I must confess as your pastor and a preacher. I've preached before that Jesus needed to touch him again for him to see it's a lie. The Bible said, Jesus said, what do you see? His eyes were opened. <laughs> the first touch opened his eyes. It was not his eyes that was a problem for the second touch. It was what he saw. He did not have focus. Oh God, I wish I had help. The problem with most of us is that we don't have focus. We are Christians. But our focus is glory. We're seeing men walking as trees. In essence, this man is saying, I'm seeing, but I know trees are huge. 
and I know that man moved. And what I'm seeing is confusing because I see something moving, so it must be a man. But they are so big, they are out of focus that it must be a tree. What are you seeing this morning? The first touch will give you sight. The first touch will give you life. The first touch will give you healing. Because now his eyes is open. And by the Bible says, give me my second slide, my last slide. You all walk with me? You see I'm almost there? You see I'm almost there? Ah, I saw the smile on all of you face. Yes, he's almost done. I told you. I told you. He said once more. He just put his hands on the man out. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. This is what I love. He saw everything. Clearly. Jesus did not have to touch him a second time for sight. Jesus touched him the second time for focus. You are here today in this at this time, you have joined online, not because you're blind, but because you need focus. You can see, but you're seeing men walking as straight. When we are out of focus, we allow people to get under our skin easily. We get annoyed easily. And when somebody mess with us, we let them know who is in charge because we are not seeing clearly. Many of us have found ourselves in bad relationships because we weren't seeing clearly. Many of us have done stuff that we shouldn't have done because we're not seeing clearly. Yeah, we have the touch, but some of us are still doing the stuff that we used to do because we're not seeing clearly. Now, you have to understand, when you're not seeing clearly, you will stumble into things. When you're not seeing clearly, people have to leave you. So you don't think for yourself. You got to trust them that they're leading you the right way. When you're, when you're not seeing clearly, you're going to stumble over things. Everything just frustrates you. Everything makes you mad. When we're all out of focus, we allow the enemy to have the upper hand of us. But I want today, Jesus, touch me again. I don't know about you, but I need a second touch. The second touch gives clarity. The second touch gives meaning to life. The second touch gives us understanding. Jesus took him, told him to look up. That's the problem right there. He was looking down. He was looking at his situation. He was looking at his problem. He was looking at everything that's going on around him. Like if we're not careful, we lose focus of what's going on in this country. And if we're not careful, we think that there is not a God. God, where are you? How could you allow what's going on to be going on like this? I had to cry out, God, what's going on? When I see that a, a country and a party that stand, so they say, on morality was able to put one of the most immoral individuals to be their leader and don't expect it to trigger down to everybody. 
And I said, God, what's going on? And this is what I got. I gave you leaders after your own heart. I gave you leaders after your own heart. What you desire. What you want. And it makes sense. Because one man could not bring democracy to the brink. He had to have people who enabled him. And so, it's God help me to focus. I got my first touch. I can see, but I'm not seeing right. Give me the second touch so I can see clearly. Jesus took him. And he looked up. Jesus for Jesus to fix his sight, he had to fix his spirit. He got to fix his mind. There ain't nothing wrong with you. What's wrong with you is your thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. And so the, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, he said, For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now we know in part. But then shall we know. As also I am known. And in concluding. In verse 26. The last verse. Jesus sent him home. Don't ever go into the village. Jesus told him not to go to the valley. The village. In Matthew chapter 11. 20 and 25. Bethsaida was cursed. Jesus said, this is Bethsaida where Jesus said, it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for you because you've seen the miracles I've worked. You've seen what I've done and you don't believe me. They looked at him as the carpenter's son. So I want you to know that God got to take us out of our custom. Because it messed us up. It messed our vision up. You got to take us out of our tradition. Because it messed us up. You got to take us out of religion. Because religion mess you up. We got to strive not for religion. But a relationship. A relationship with your God. So now that you have a relationship with God. My relationship is different. Than yours elder. I got three kids, and I love all three of them, but our relationship is different. We don't need church. We need God. We don't need religion. We need God. And until we can see that, after touching this man, Jesus touched him again. I believe the church today is like this blind man. We stand desperate in need of, a second, of the second touch. Until we receive the second touch, we will be out of touch, out of focus, and confused like this man was. The second touch will bring us from symbol into substance, from pride into power. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. He bids us to come to him. That's why he said you got to leave mother, leave father. You got to come to Jesus. We must be led out of town, away from the things that keep us bound. I'm going to let you know that we got to, for our eyes to open, we got to have a clean heart. The church need a second touch so we can stop seeing men walking as free. We want to see people look like people. 
We want to see things are to look like things. God is no respecter of person. He does not care if you have a PhD, PhD or no degree. The Lord loves us. The reason why we are so confused today is because we need a second touch. Jesus touched this man, blind man the second time. My question to you is, what are you seeing? Can you see? The second touch will let you see right. That right looks like right. And wrong looks like wrong. Sin looks like sin. When we have the second touch, there will be no need for us to be feeling around. There's no need for us to be fumbling around or stumbling or to trip in life because we can see where we're going. The only reason why we're struggling and stumbling in life is because we're not seeing clearly. And I said the first touch gives sight. The second touch gives clarity. The first touch gives life. The second touch gives meaning to the life. The first touch gives hearing. The second gives understanding. I need a second touch this morning. I need a second touch this morning. I don't know about you. You see, I still have some rivers that I still need to cross. Oh, y'all are here. I still got some mountain that I still need to climb. I know a God right now that can purify us, sanctify us, and justify us, and glorify us if we will just receive the second touch. I don't know about you, but I need a touch in my life. I need a touch in my marriage. I need a touch in my finances. I need a touch in my business. I need a touch this morning. God, touch me a second time. I need a touch. And I want you to know this. That's very important. Vision is given. Not for where you're coming from for where you're going. That's why after he opened his eyes, he took him from where he was and sent him to where he's going. I need a second touch this morning. I'm not blind. I can see, but I need focus. Focus for my ministry. Focus for my life. Focus for my decision. I need a second touch. God, give me a touch. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me. I need a second touch. If you need a second touch this morning, if there's something in your life and you need a touch, he's here. You may be like this blind man. Somebody had to drag you here. You didn't want to come. But when you get into the presence of God, he's able to open your eyes so you can see. I thank God for my mom and that dragged me to church when I didn't want to go to church, elder. I went to church one day and I heard the word and I say yes to Jesus. So if you're here today, your eyes are not open. For you to think about what you've been done and what you were doing is to help you to see clearly to go forward. That's why I ain't looking back. I ain't going back. I'll go forward. Stand with me.
boca se isola. A boca se isola. I just need another touch for focus. Thank God, thank God. Thank God. It's not that I can't see. I just need focus. That's all it is. I want to know where you're going, God. What you're doing with me. Yeah, all I need, all I need. Touch me, King Lord. I just need another touch. Is there someone else? You know, I don't give long altar call. Thank God, thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. were open, but he just did not see clearly. Touch him again. Get me the oil, please. Clarity. That's all we need. As we come before you at this moment, oh God, we understand that many a many a times it's not that we can't see; it's just that our focus are not there. And so, God, as we come at this moment, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. God, as I lay my hands on Andre, I pray you'll give him focus. Oh God, give him focus at this moment. Oh God, whatever it is. Oh God, help him to see clearly. Help him to start looking around what's around him and start to look up. Because when you look up, everything comes into focus. God of heaven, I pray. Bless him now. Lord, I pray at this moment. As I lay my hand, oh God, at this moment, a tyrant, God, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I pray at this moment that you will touch him. Is this Tyshawn? Yes, it's Tyshawn. God, I pray right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will touch him. God, give him focus this morning. Let his eyes be open, oh God. And whatever it is, oh God, that you desire of him, 
that he will see clearly. Help him to understand that you're not giving him vision for where he's coming from, but you're giving him vision for where he's going. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that he will go not looking back, but marching ahead. Open up his eyes and give him clear vision today in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, I come to you. I lay my hands upon clinching. God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that as he comes to you, oh God, we're so thankful that he's not blind. He's not blind today, oh God. It's just that sometimes our vision are blurry. We can't see clearly. Sometimes we see men walking as trees. But Lord, today I pray that as of today, he will not see any more men walking as trees, but he will see clearly. He'll see man for man. Oh God, just like Isaiah, when Isaiah went into the temple, and he saw you, he saw himself. And Lord, he was able to see you high and lifted up. So it is, oh God. I pray, Christian, we'll see you as high and lifted up. And that there is nothing too hard for you. That you can do all things and everything. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Oh God, all I need is a touch. All I need, all I need, all I need. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, today we have read the scripture. We understand that some things happen immediately while others takes time. Lord, as I lay my hands on Sister Kathy at this moment, God, I pray right now, whatever it is, Jesus, whatever she needs at this moment, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant it unto her, oh God. Let your will be done in her life. Grant her the good desire of her heart. Lord, like the blind man, help her to see you for who you are. Help her to see clearly. Lord, sometimes we look at life and we question, why, Lord? But God, I pray today that she'll understand that you who have begun a good work in her, you're not going to leave her. You're going to see it until the end. So, God, I pray for strength. I pray, oh God, that you will touch her body, every bone, Oh, God, ever nerves, everything, oh, God. Right now, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you pour your blessing upon her. Now, oh, God, it is done. Whatever it is, whatever it is, God, it is done. And she will see clearly again. In Jesus' name. All I need, all I need, all I need, all I need. some stuff that it takes a while to drop off, but it will drop off. 
I just want God to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour a blessing upon each and every one of us. God, I pray right now that everyone that is in this house, that you will pour out a blessing upon them. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Let it rain on us this morning. Let it rain, 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 let it rain. Lord, some of us have been praying for a while. Wonder if you had forgotten us. Today I pray that you'll open the floodgates of heaven and let the rain fall on your people. Rain down upon us, oh God, rain down upon us. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need the rain today. Let it rain on us, oh God. Oh God, so much is going on in this world, so we need a fresh touch. Let it rain, 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 let it rain. We need a fresh anointing this morning. We need a fresh touch this morning. We need you this morning, oh God. Rain on your people, rain down on your people. Oh God, water us with your blessing. Oh.
that it will be done. And you will testify and will tell somebody. We we'll know that you have been in the presence of God. And so your life will never be the same again. Because now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And to present us forth us before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God. To him be glory. Majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forevermore. I pronounce upon you a blessing. Go in peace. God bless you. Oh, it's raining, it's raining, it's raining. Love it, somebody. Love it, somebody. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, let give God a praise. Come on, come on. Love on him, love on him. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Go in peace, go in peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.